What's up guys? We're gonna be doing a save slot mechanic in the sandbox today. It's gonna be a cool one. What if in this game, I wanted to start from level two or let's take Dracula's dungeon, right? And you wanted to start where you left off. Save slot. How will this work? So in order to pull this off, you need to plan very, very carefully. All right, so we're gonna have one section here. Let's say, let's call this the the load area, right? This is where we're gonna have the prompt that says, what's your kind of your, your save code? Let's do two for now, okay? Let's do, t imagine we're having two levels. Let's put a third just for presentation. So we have three regions, right? And the, and the, what we, we want to happen is when we load into the experience, I want to be prompted with a save code, all right, or, or some type of save code. And that save code will determine if I should be going here, if I should be there, and, and whatever quests that I've completed, right? So let's say you have 10 quests, it'll previously set. Let's get our trusty handy dandy Excel sheet. Of course, we can't live without Excel sheets, guys. The whole purpose of life is Excel sheets. Topic of today's lesson, save slots in the sandbox what do we have all right we need we need we need a matrix right let's say quest one right quest these can't be it doesn't have to be quests it can be anything you want to save and capture data on right quest two quest three right let's say quest four checkpoint one checkpoint two checkpoint Three. Hopefully Sandbox will come up with a mechanic that this is just built into the engine. Because here's here's the issue. If I finish the game, right, when I'm loading out, I get a symbol or, or code or whatever. I can now share that code with a friend. And now they can go and start from where they saved off. The code has to be unique. See, that's the difficult part. You can make it unique, but that will add multiple levels of ridiculousness so if the code is not unique other players can spawn directly on the last of it but for this today's stream it's not going to be unique for this one what we're going to do is we're going to prompt an entry code and then when we're leaving we're going to be requesting for the load code so how do we do this let's say we give each quest a representation Let's remove the checkpoints out of the area, but let's let's give these quests a representation. Okay, let's say, let's pick something, some items. I mean, I guess I can make numpads for all of them, right? Yeah, let's do numpads. So let's say we called, say this none, let's call this quest one. So we'll be using a mechanic that is used by the industry for like, for encryption. So a, a similar case is Telegram encrypted chat when you do a video call it gives you four emojis to make sure hey you tell the other person hey what do you what do you see on your screen and it's like oh i see a trumpet green heart thumbs up and a pig and if and if both ends match then you know you guys are both safe right we're going to be using something similar we're going to be doing something similar Instead of letters, we're going to be doing little icons that you can pick and choose. So let's say, uh, let's call this quest one and put an indicator. Um, call it quest one, right? All right, quest two, okay. Quest three, and then quest four. So let those sit there for a second. All right, we got your one, two, three, four quests. That's the beginning of this journey um, but I guess the first thing we need to do is do a asker prompt so let's do um, a poll street poll or whatever that's too big um, lamb there you go let's do load code noted all right so load code so ideally when we come here let's do a speaker to detect the avatar and then let's do a sign. I like the signs. Signs are fun. Okay, asker. So we're gonna trigger this asker speaker name, load code, right? Okay, we're gonna select the first and let's say Apple Heart. 
Let's do rainbow. Let's do the warning sign. And so these are the four, right? Do I even have an apple? No, we don't have an apple. Let's do watermelon. Yeah, let's do watermelon. This is going to be the um, Asker one. Okay. And then, so when we detect this, we're going to trigger this by. Let's say trigger required, it's going to be, let's call it load code one. Say one of four for now. Okay. And then, so this is going to be, I'm thinking if we can message it by, okay, so we'll do slot one. So this is going to be one dot watermelon and two dot um, heart or no one dot heart. Okay. So the, the number in the front will represent the slot one dot rainbow. So this is load code one. I know we need four more of these. So we're going to call this load code two of four. Ask uh, load code two, load code. And you really want to make sure you're naming things properly because, you know, otherwise you're looking for a nightmare to happen. So load code dot two is what's going to trigger this. And then this is, we're going to do two watermelon. And literally this is no different than doing the code combinations that we have, we enter for alpha games that we play, right? It's just, we're going to be attaching these two points that will activate certain things. Okay. So that's three. Uh, we got to make sure we change the load code to load code dot three load code four. So we're going to do this load code four. So now the problem is since all of these will have a trigger event, we need to, right? So if we, if we did this and we said, okay, you detected the avatar and I want to do load code one, right? This will work, but here's the problem. Okay, which one do you select? I'm gonna do watermelon, but how do I go to the next one? Normally a, a response would trigger something. So we have to do something else, right? Let's do another numpad. That will basically, do we need to do four numpads? Let me think. I think we have to do four numpads for each. Yeah, we might have to do four numpads for each. So we have to do, all right, we can, we have to do a message broadcaster, I guess. I'm trying to see if there's another way we can do it. Message sent, we say load code two. And then you can send it to, we'll do everybody in range for now. Okay. Load code two, load code two. Everyone in cage, load code two. And then the message required for this is, oh, I guess I can just do one, one broadcaster and just call it watermelon and then say, I forgot that you could do multiple rainbow. I don't think you need all of them, right? Warning sign. Okay, so whenever I do this, it'll trigger the second one, right? So let's do rainbow. Great. Okay. Again, we have to do the same thing for each of them. So now I am gonna have to do load code three, right? And then we have to do two dot watermelon, two dot heart, two dot rainbow, and then two dot warning sign. And if I'm confusing you, please let me know. And if you think something can be improved, we'll go over that and make those changes. So this is going to be, we did that one and two. This one's going to be three, right? So when you select three of, I guess, heart, I don't know, three of, what was the first one? It was, I really wish this gets like opened up so we don't have to press logic every time. 
So three dot watermelon, um, three dot heart, uh, three dot rainbow, and then three dot warning sign. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more. So each of these will trigger something. And in order to change between the askers and the codes, we're doing a message broadcaster that's listening to one of the responses that's triggering to the next event. So this one, this will be the last one. So we don't, we may not need this one. Okay. Unless we want to say, unless the message it needs to send is, yeah, no, we don't, we may not need this. Okay, so let's try this. So what's, what is it? Say watermelon. Oh, got to change the messages. Load code one, two, three, and then four. The problem is I think we forgot to change the, the messaging. on the edit logic. So this one is three. This one needs to be four. Load code three. Oh, okay, here's what happened. Three dot heart. That's weird, I'm pretty sure I did this. Huh, okay. I guess you just got to select none first too. Sometimes it does have these bugs. So you may be doing the right thing, but just got to reset it sometimes, you know. But I forgot the combination. I don't think it matters. Art um two dot warning sign and then two dot what was the other one? Rainbow. Three, two, load code one, three. So let's try this real quick. Watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Okay, so it's supposed to end there. So why did it get stuck hmm. on the third one? Let's look at this. You got three, three, three. Load code three is required. This is sending load code three to two on the three. And then it loads that. Load code three. And I guess this one needs to say load code four, which this is supposed to be doing. There you go. Try again. That was our mistake. Let's try again. Watermelon, 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 watermelon. Okay. Great. So we have the mechanic to, to get the input. We got the thing to input. So let's put our quests in real quick because we need to do, we need to use the examples. Trigger the quests. Do we need, can we put more than one? Like if we say require message. Yeah, this is going to get where it's going to get interesting because you're going to have the triggers. So you need to be able to trigger the quest beforehand as well. So if I don't have that quest and I'm doing a save, I'm doing a save and I'm doing a load. So we need to do the first one first, right? So if we were to do an auto unlocked on the quest, that's fine. But all quests won't be loaded all at the same time. So what's going to need to happen is we need to have this require message get funneled through the mechanic in a way. Let's start by, it needs to load it and then it also needs to complete it. So, so we need a trigger. All right, let's call this one. Let me go to my Excel sheet. So let's say the, let's erase the checkpoints for now because the checkpoints will be fairly, fairly easy. Assuming all quests are not launched at the time, we need something that will launch the quest. We need something that will complete the quest, okay? 
And I'm thinking if you're playing the natural order of the game, that message will be the same. So if we said big quest, let's say Q1, Q1 stop begin, or let's say Q1 launch, and then say Q2 complete, okay? Or Q1 complete. Same thing here, let's say 2Q launch, and then Q2, I always use Excel, so Q3 launch, and I highly recommend this to you guys as well, just so you can keep track of what you're doing, you know? At least it's, it's, it's how I process things. So to launch this quest, we're gonna say require message to Q1 launch, all right? It's gonna auto launch, and then wait for message or Q1 complete, right? Q1 complete. And then assuming that the quests are not parallel, like they're not sequential, we don't really need it to do anything because I wanted to make it all individual. You could technically trigger the next quest automatically if it was sequential. It really depends on your game, but for this exercise, I think we're not going to do that. I think that might be an easier route where you trigger one and if it two completes, trigger two and it, and it just completes that automatically. Okay, let's try this. All right, watermelon, watermelon. All right, cool. So now we have to make a combination of what does, what does launched quest mean? versus what is what is completed mean, right? In terms of the mechanic to understand that something was launched. So let's give them static values for now. Let's say, or let's say slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four. Let's say to launch it is watermelon, 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 okay? And then heart. Or actually let's do watermelon, watermelon, to launch it, right? To launch and then to complete it, slot one, slot two. There's probably an easier way to think of this right now. I just can't. I'm just thinking this is all a rough draft right now, guys. So to complete it, it's watermelon, 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 watermelon. And then we'll do this as heart. And then that'll kind of follow the same pattern for now. I mean, you can get as complex as you want with it, but I'm just going to do this right now. Like to launch the third one, we're going to, the second one is going to be heart, 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 and then it's going to be heart, heart, heart. And then what was the next one? Rainbow. And then we can do rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. And each slot could have a different representation too. That's another way. Like one, one slot one could represent slot one and two could represent like I don't need four slots to do this. Slot one and two could represent the the if if the if the quest is completed or if it's if it's launched. Slot three could represent the location in the game. Slot four could just I don't know, but let's do slot one and two first as we're thinking and if you guys have any questions or tips that maybe I'm not thinking of yet because you guys are so much more smarter than I am right so this way I can launch it I can think it so how do we now go back into the sandbox and uh, say that watermelon 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 will launch quest one I'm trying to think if we can make it the hard way first and then go back and optimize because ideally what you can do is have a spawner as well to detect these let's create let's create some assets let's call this watermelon Indicator, watermelon, uh, label, let's say watermelon. Thinking if I need to create different watermelons for each of the slots, I may not need to. All right, we got watermelon, we have heart. So we have watermelon, heart, 
rainbow, rainbow. I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to complete this within two hours, though. Rainbow. So this is a rainbow. This is a heart. So we're making the assets right now to understand and trigger the combinations that will trigger and close the quests. Okay. But like I said, this needs to be pre-planned. To go back and do this once you completed your game in Sandbox would be, I think, a little challenging. It's not impossible. You know, so we got Watermelon, Heart, Rainbow, and then we want one more. They don't do anything right now. They're just labels. Say warning sign. Okay. Let's look at this. All right, we got our one on heart. We're on rainbow. We're going to have a plate. Plot one dot spawner. And then this one will spawn. This means these things need gravity. Let's do collisions and gravity for these. We might need four spawners for each one. Spawn one. All right, we're going to save these as presets for now. Watermelon. We're going to need four spawners. We're going to do use a preset. Watermelon. Okay, that's one. And then we're going to do another one. And they're going to be overlapped. A heart, okay. Rainbow, watermelon, heart, rainbow, watermelon, heart, rainbow, warning sign, okay. And we just have to make sure we change these. Heart, watermelon, rainbow, warning sign. All right, now these are all for slot one, which means the required message will be, let's say this one will be one dot watermelon. This one will be one dot heart. This one will be one dot rainbow. Okay, and we're gonna create four sets of these, I think. Uh, one dot warning, I think, sign, right? Cool. And then we're gonna, we're gonna overlap them a little bit. Okay. And we're gonna save this. Ideally, whatever I select on the first message should get spawned now. Okay. So. You see the watermelon has dropped. Actually, I think I should just move this in front of me. Okay. So we're going to select watermelon. As you can see, the watermelon drops, right? Let's try the second one. Let's do the heart. The heart drops, right? So now we're basically putting in the locks in place, right? And then we're going to have triggers that listen to them that, um, that do the thing that we needed to do, okay? Cool. That was pretty simple enough, I think, right? Okay. So now this one.
All right, now we have slot two. We need to separate these now, okay? Because okay, so now we're gonna call this slot two. Slot two. Naming is super important, guys. Like you will get confused if you don't name it properly. I might have to move these around because the speaker component may get triggered. All right, so now we have to change the codes to to that watermelon, for example. Make sure if there is a check mark already, make sure you select none because sandbox, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> sandbox has issues, guys. We know that, it's no secret. Two dot rainbow. And then warning sign. Um, two dot warning sign. And then two dot heart, okay. Now we're going to put these back. I might actually change to make my life easier. I might actually just change um, the dimension, the the combination we had to like heart watermelon. OK, let's do this. So let's save this. All right, guys, so watermelon gets dropped and then warning sign gets dropped and then watermelon good. Okay, so now that works, okay? I could push these around. We don't need these actually. These are just, I put them for, for presets. Move them around to the side here so they don't confuse us. Watermelon, heart, watermelon, watermelon. Okay. So once we get this down, I'm going to make sure we do this once. Only once. So we'd have to reload the game so it doesn't happen again when you're walking around, you know? We need something that will understand the inputs that we put. Right? Kind of like a memory. And to do that, I guess the easier way is... You can also do chained events too, I guess. My brain's starting to hurt. All right, I wanna try something simple for now. I wanna try to just load the quest. We're gonna have a detector, a platform. Okay. Just uh... all right. So this one will kind of be our. Actually, let's do this. Let's do the shoes. Oh, I can't do the shoes. Let's do the. Let's do this. Shield. Okay. So this will be the detector. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna assume. We're gonna parent this. We're gonna call this. We want we want the actions also to happen at the end, not when I'm clicking, right? Because then you can brute force it.
Can we just go? All right, we're going to do speaker. I feel like I'm making this way more complex than I need to make it, but it will work. Okay, so we're going to do a listener. We do a spawner, and then we're going to do a listener for. Um, So this one, we'll call this slot one dot load. Okay, and this will be kind of be the enter mechanic. So each each ball drop multi key stack is a level unlock save point, right? And it's related to the code input, right? Yeah, basically, basically. But you can see the level of complexity this will have, and then you need to plan it ahead of time. Um, for the most part, I think. Or you could just trigger out your, your triggers later on, right? So this one, for example, you can even get more complex where like you don't know what combination is um you don't know which combination is um all right okay here's what we're gonna do so the message for this we're gonna look for detect at entity we're gonna do one Maybe make one combo first and then switch up from there. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna target the watermelon first, okay? We're gonna target what we know, okay? And then we're gonna go back and do it. So this is gonna be the watermelon, okay? So if we assign this, we're gonna say if it's the watermelon, then I want to launch um god as i think about it it just gets layered in my mind on how complex this whole endeavor is all right q1 launch right we need we want watermelon to do q1 launch so we want it to do q1 launch we don't need a wolf. Get the fucking wolf out of here. Um, hashtag 2023 to enter into the giveaway um, for, for the antlers. So we're going to look for watermelon. And then if this is detected, we're going to do Q1 launch. Actually, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then we're going to do this one. If it's heart, if it's watermelon, we do Q1 launch, I guess, again. And then if it's if it's heart for this one. Then we do Q2 or Q1 complete. Okay. Sorry for the silence, guys. I'm I'm thinking from the, I'm also thinking while I'm doing it because, like I said, this is the first time that I'm trying to do something like this. All right, so this should be straightforward. What I want to do now is, let's call this enter 
last, right? And we're going to parent these. Well, this is slot two load. All right, this is slot two load. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. When we move this, okay, that will be the mechanic to enable the platform, right? So we're going to make this a platform that goes Let's do one, nope, we're gonna do negative 10, nope, negative five, negative four, nope, negative, I guess we could do negative four. Okay, we're gonna do negative four. And then, we're gonna make sure this is, we're gonna make sure that this is not enabled Okay, and then we're gonna say um, load, um, or let's call it enter code. Okay. Or actually, let's do this enter code. Okay, so now when we do the last one, I guess I need the fourth one now to have the send event. Message to send will be enter code. And then we need this for watermelon four dot art four dot rainbow and then four dot warning sign. Okay. Let's try it. Just try it real quick. See if it's going to work. Okay. So we started it. The platform should not be working until we do the enter code. So I'm going to do rainbow, rainbow, and then warning sign rainbow. And that didn't work. Turn on message. Message to send. Oh, because it's in range. That's why. Let's say all. Because it's not in range. Okay, let's try again. Watermelon. Warning, warning, warning. Cool. So <laughs> it does look funny, but now we that triggered the, the load, right? So just, just for reference. All right, watermelon, watermelon. Yeah, those are save items. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, so that launched the quest. All right, so now let's launch and complete the quest. All right, to do that. The heart will represent Q1 complete. Okay. The heart will represent the complete, okay, watermelon, heart, heart, heart. Okay, so that should unlock and complete it at the same time. Boom. Okay, cool. So now, wait a minute. Okay, so that, so if I do watermelon, watermelon, you guys saw that, right? So if I do watermelon whatever doesn't matter what the other ones are right now it only loads the quest right i can i can tra teleport this person now to that location and it just loads it okay 
if I do watermelon heart, whatever the other combination is, it'll load and it'll it'll complete it. Oh, it didn't because Okay, it's going a little fast. Let's make it slower. It did it because the, the the heart like flew away. Okay. But once we handle the mechanics, so we're gonna make sure this code loads and saves. What if we turn off collisions on these? That work. Watermelon heart. Okay, for some reason it looks like the, the heart didn't save. Oh uh, yeah, Q1 complete, it's there. So the watermelon, watermelon doesn't do anything. The heart is supposed to complete it. I want to make sure maybe the quest we didn't save. Yeah, it's saved. All right, let's try it again. Watermelon heart. Watermelon, watermelon. There you go. That worked. Okay, cool. Very cool. So watermelon, whatever, triggers the, the thing. Watermelon heart completes it. Now, let's say, let's do another thing. Is something wire lower place moving? That's the enter mechanic, right? So if I do warning, 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 and then now I submit it basically, right? And then it checks the code and then it'll have some result. Different ways of doing this now that I'm thinking about it because I don't want it to I don't want the actions to trigger as I'm doing them I want it to trigger at the end so now let's say over here this section on the left put a speaker okay and let's say detect the avatar when we detect the avatar in this region and you guys know how to quest do quests I don't have to walk through this but what I want to do is now I want to make sure I can get my load state at any point in time so if I do quest one launch here so let's say, whatever, this is not important right now. I guess, I guess this should be, this should be a asker to say, Hey, do you, do you want to do it or not instead of speaker? So let's change this to a, to a button instead of a speaker. And then We do load load code one. And then remove the speaker. Because that way I don't want it to trigger automatically now. Okay, cool. So now this won't trigger unless I, I press E. So right now what I want to do, let's say I'm playing my game, right? I'm inside my game, la la la, or my quest is started. Okay. And then let's let's put some tree here that will represent on death a quest that's completed. All right. So we're gonna come in here. We're we're in the beginning of our game, right? You got the quest. All right. Don't worry about that mechanic over there for a second, right? And then we're going to kill this guy. 
All right, we're going to do our quest, and then he dies. Well, that was dumb, because I didn't set the... When it dies, send... Which message it does send? Oh. Why didn't it work? Oh, because... I think the death mechanic works. Let's do a notepad here. Uh, tree death, right? Two, one, complete. Okay. Kill dot tree. Okay. So when this dies, we're gonna say kill dot tree and we're gonna send it to tree dot death. Uh tree numpad. All right, that's that's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, tree numpad. That should work. All right, let's do this. All right, so I'm playing my game. We got our quest. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and kill this tree. And that should complete that quest. Okay. Great. Now, we've done that and we made progress in our game. Right. And I want to now, the part where we're going to get is our load code. Now I can say here that not only watermelon won, but so now we're going to say another message that to load this one, to load the quest, we're going to be saying Q1 triggered. Okay, we're going to call this Q1 triggered. So if I launch that, you should see a watermelon drop, but it won't because why? We're doing Q1 launch. I guess we could just change it to that, right? Hold on. Yeah, let's do that. Hold on, let's do that. Slot one load. No, that not that one. Not triggered, Q1. We're in a Q1. Yeah, there's no reason to add a second. So this is now we we've done the loading mechanism now we want to do the saving mechanic mechanic all right so now we've we know that that's a watermelon okay but and then when we complete this it should do a heart okay 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 so that's just sending it more than once that's fine i don't really care about that right now i can fix that later so now we're going to just we'll take a little bit of play planning or if you're doing this for a full game so heart two will be q1 complete okay now watch let's say i don't know the code okay Let's say I started the game. All right, we got the watermelon there. I should actually just. Why does it keep doing it? And then do this once. Only load once. We're going to do our l code show. And then we're going to maybe do a teleportation and then we'll call it. And then that will pretty much be the concept. And then we can continue on to it watermelon right and then um we're gonna kill the tree right and then that's going to be loading the the heart what we want to do is maybe set up a 
a booth or a pa- we could we could do two things. We could either do a panel or we could do a prompter. Now, let's say let's call this a stand or I don't know. What do you guys want to call this? A, a load load an area that you can find out your load code for now, right? Or we could do a message prompt. Honestly, you can just do the same thing, right? I can just I can just make this zone be the load code, right? Or I can make prompts that will go and detect and tell me what what they are. So this could be my load zone, right? So if I were to let's say block this off. Let's say this is our load room, right? That's not let's say that's not where we load up. But let's say we we do let's say we we load up into a white area and then we can choose to say if we're going into into the load zone or into start the game, right? So now I don't know, right? Let's say I'm in the load game place. I do the thing. And then if I go to hey, like hey, I want to see what my load code is. I can see hey, it's watermelon and heart. And then the next time I come, I can do that. Or I can make it a emit message prompt. But and we can add on to this, right? So maybe even something simple as this. What we can do is do another asker. And then this will be the asker to say start or load, right? So do you want to load game? No. Say yes. Okay. Yeah, let's call it teleport one. And then let's call this teleport zero two. Naming mechanic is, I guess, the important thing. Go into our camera now. Go into our components. I'm going to change this respawn tag to checkpoint, right? And then if numpad well first we need a checkpoint checkpoint numpad okay call it tag checkpoint and then we need a we need a spawner checkpoint dot zero call it checkpoint and then we're going to save this as save to preset i'm going to call this checkpoint zero and then this is going to be an asset spawner and call this an asset spawner reset and then do checkpoint zero. And then it should load up on whatever whatever message that we put it, right? So what was the one that we did? Load, not load, teleport zero. Okay. So teleport zero. Not visible. And then uh, no collision, obviously. And then one thing that we need to do is just like in the teleport, in the checkpoint teleport mechanic, we need to make sure we we do a, a message system where we do kill avatar, obviously. So if it's, um, you know, teleport zero, and then, no, no, if I do teleport zero into the required, we'll do message to sent will be kill, what was it, kill avatar? Let's do kill avatar. Um, message to sent will be kill avatar. Okay. Sure thing, little legion. Close to wrapping it up to where I wanted to get it. 
Okay. Perfect. So awesome. And then now we're going to do the same thing. Okay. But instead of checkpoint one, Um, do I need to make this separate? I don't think so. I can just change this one and then change the teleport one. Okay. And then change this over to, um, add a second one saying that I'm starting at the beginning of the game, right? Actually, look, I could even do it on the same one. Yeah, there you go. So teleport one. So teleport one, two, whatever, they will all do the same thing. We're just loading it into a different zone. So if we say no, so I go into the game, I load, right? We can make this a speaker component, it's fine. If it, they want to load the game, no. Now I should go to the other side, perfect. Now my game has started, right? My code has launched. Um, and then now my quest is completed. And then if I want to see the code, right, I can, I can see it there. That works. Now, um, do I want to load the game? Yes, I do. Right. So now I can come in here and say watermelon heart, watermelon, watermelon. Okay. And then now we want to trigger. Maybe, maybe we can do another thing that will spawn right that will spawn you to go over here since you're loading into the new plate now, so. I'm going to call this teleport. Um, so they're going to be, this is going to be obviously, let's call this um, teleport dot two. Do I want to call it teleport two? Yeah, why not? Call it teleport two. And then what could happen is in here, my quill quest, I can, um, I can send a message afterwards to kind of initiate the checkpoint too. There's other ways we can do this, but I'm going to call this teleport, teleport two. And that will just create the the checkpoint. All right. Um, and then for the load mechanic, what will happen is we can trigger something else as well. What we can do is make this a little longer. 
say negative 5, for example, or even negative, negative 10. Not negative 10, maybe negative 6. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll put another numpad. And this will be a speaker component. And then we're going to do detect avatar, not avatar. We're going to detect the shield. And then if the shield is detected, this is obviously needs to be after the game loads. And you will have to play with this because it'll sometimes load properly and not. And then we're going to say kill avatar. The only thing is this needs to turn off after we do kill avatar. And this only should only be spoken once. Actually, we don't have to turn it off. We can, but anyway, we just want to make sure this one is sent once so it doesn't keep killing us every time it goes back there. Okay. So now, theoretically, what should happen is I've spawned a load point, right? So if I say, let's say if I say load game, no, that's going to bring me here where I start my game. I'll, I'll defeat my game, right? All is good. And then I'll go into my next region of my game and blah, 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 whatever the second quest is, okay? But let's say I wanna leave, I see my code, it's watermelon heart. Now I go back to my game after some point and I say load game. And then now I wanna say watermelon heart rainbow warning sign. What that will do is start the quest, kill the avatar. Why is it not working? It's spamming. It's not it's supposed to stop. Is it not detecting it? Oh, it's not detecting because we didn't name it shield. Okay, there you go. So let's say we went back. Now we know our code. I'm gonna load my game now. All right, we're gonna do watermelon heart. Rainbow, rainbow, whatever. Now it's gonna it's gonna load the game, complete it, and it's gonna kill me. And then I'm gonna start where oh, okay. I need to make sure I kill this off after. Okay, so the the checkpoint preset, it needs to die off once let's call it load load zero. Load. That's code one. So when when it's load code one, we have to make sure we kill it. And we can even use this as an entry mechanic too, instead of the last last one, which is fine. So we're gonna we're gonna save this checkpoint zero and do save to preset and save it call it checkpoint zero the same name okay and delete it now ideally uh we want to load game and then that'll come here and then when we do this it'll kill that off and then we'll do watermelon heart all right and then what's that's going to do time the speed it's going to kill the avatar and then load it in that second scene boom baby what do you guys think that works any questions so do you want to load the game no i don't want to load the game so now i can i can begin my game well cool. and then i can go my merry way do my game and then you just repeat this, basically. We can do a second one, maybe on another stream. But ideally, this is it. You just now have to figure out which set of combinations does what. What'd you guys think about that? I wanna know your opinions. Was that helpful? And like thinking maybe differently? We can hide these, right? We don't even need to see these other ones, obviously.
And then we can actually turn this one into, instead of, what is this? Instead of interact, we can just say um, detect game. Right, so then we just do and yet another numpad. The uh, speaker component. I'm actually really happy this is this will work out the way I'm thinking it would. Like you just have to be, you just have to spend time on it. Okay, so detect game. So now when I'm when I'm starting my quest, all right, let's do let's also do kind of a pathway into, you know, our imagination into the next area, so to speak. Right, so. This place doesn't exist. It's call it the engine room, whatever. You want to load the game or start the game, right? I wanna, I wanna not load the game. I wanna start the new game, and then I, I get my quest. All right. I finish my quest. I move on with my life, right? And then I can have a button that basically tells me, "Hey, your load code is watermelon something something." Okay. And then I can just I can just quit the game, right? Here. And then when I come back, it's like, do you want to load the game? Yeah, I do. Okay. No. What's your what's your load code? It is watermelon heart rainbow something. We can make that a little faster. And then boom, we are off and our quests are have been completed. And we can continue where we left off. And now you just have to do this for everything. It's that simple. Now go and do this for everything now. That's that's all you gotta do. Make sure you do it for everything. There is a different way of doing this. Now, if we want to go back and think about like dynamic shit, like I need to go back and think about the most optimal way of doing this. Like this works, right? Watermelon heart, rainbow, rainbow. Takes a while to load, I guess. We could do a loading. You could do like a loading animation. Yay. So that way I don't have to play any of that other part that was there. You know, and if you want to get more complex, like you can have separate triggers that actually kill these items in place too. So that way, if you were to go backwards on the map, right, or if you didn't lock out your doors and you want to try to go back on the map, you can actually go and kill those states. So, so for example, another thing we can add here is here where we can do. Message to sent will be till tree, okay? And then, but the message required would maybe be teleport to, okay? Oh, wait, but I did the wrong thing. Give me one second. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now, ideally, we want to we wanna bring the game back to the state that it was in, in terms of world stuff, right? Or the map stuff. So now I'm here, I have my quest to go kill the monster or collect the thing or whatever. Go press E, so to speak, right? <laughs> now we know that tree doesn't exist, right? It never existed after, after we died and then we came here, but now we're in this new level and we have to quit our game and start where we wanted to start. We know our code is watermelon heart, right? And we can now load back in, right? And then say watermelon heart. And then what that will do is kill me, teleport me, 
And then if I go back, it didn't work because Why didn't it work? It's because it was far away. So what triggers teleport two now? Teleport two is triggered by this quest. And maybe you need these quest. You can work things around so like these quests can go trigger someone else and you can have a chain command. But like for this example, I'm trying to do this so that this tree will die. Oh, instant kill. You gotta do... Uh, let's say teleport to, right? You can... Actually, I did it wrong. We just need to change this to kill tree. Okay. All right. Load game. Yes, sir. I want to do the water mana and the heart and the da da da. That's going to load me into the point in the game that I want it to be in. Ignore that there's multiple, and then the tree is gone, baby. The set, the scene has been set. I can now begin my life to where I started. Now, doing this obviously will take a lot of planning, and as you can see, um, it took us two and a half hours to just do a simple quest with a very simple loader. Yeah. It's just, it can be done. Just will take more time and more planning. Yeah, I think it was, uh, that was a cool one. Let me know, guys. We'll do a, we'll do another tutorial on this once we get more. Maybe we'll do like three with like items and other scenes and and make it more walk throughable. But we'll, we'll go ahead and upload this on YouTube as well. So you get, people can see it. But for now, you can look at the VODs. But yeah, we got the save mechanic. We got the load mechanic. And we can see the code here. I mean, if we really wanted to, okay, if we really wanted it to, all right, here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. One last thing before I go. Let's do the YMG shield. Okay, so this YMG shield will tell us what the first prompt will be okay how do we do this so what we want to do so i want to say show code only use once code one And then we have to do this for your first code is watermelon. Right? You could do something like this, or you could even like spawn it in like in a region. And you say like, okay. Show code one. I would say show code. And then the second one will be show.code.2, okay? And then you need to do four of these on each slot. Basically, what I want to do is if it's watermelon, it's going to say watermelon. If it's, if it's something else, it's going to say something else, right? And then it'll, it'll go to the next one when I press the show code function. Now, to do this though, so we're going to do wait for 
detect entity, and I want to do watermelon. Okay. If it's watermelon, it will only work if it detects watermelon and it gets the code. Will this work? I don't know. We're going to try. No collisions. I'm going to put this here. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to we're going to try it. I'm going to call this numpad. Got another numpad here. So this will be the button that says show code. Okay, so watermelon is there, okay, the asker didn't prompt, so ideally, it detects that it's watermelon, okay, it detects that it's heart, so when I say show code, your first code is watermelon, so we don't even need this now, and then we'll do code two, and then your second, your second, Code is heart, right? And then, um, and then you just gotta keep doing this. Show code three, All right? So that will that will show the next one, All right? So you don't even need to like it, it right? <laughs> so I don't want to load the game. Cool. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to say, hey, what are my codes? Your first code is watermelon, your second code is heart. So now I can, I can quit the game, come back. Do you want to load the game? Yes, I do. I'm going to start exactly where I left off. Watermelon, heart. Boom. And this will probably, because there's multiple there, it'll probably show. Oh, no, it didn't. It's only once, though. That's why. That's awesome. But you understand what you could do with that, right? Like with, depending on how big your game is, right? And you can uh, technically change that around every time. But that's pretty cool. All right, guys. I think that will, I will wrap it up there. Hope you guys enjoyed that little breakthrough.